Today's video is gonna be a bit of a talking head video because we're talking about AT&T's newish gateway. This is the BGW320-500, and you guys might be interested, especially if you have AT&T Fiber at home, or if you're thinking about getting AT&T Fiber because it has a couple of unique features that you'll probably be interested in. And one of those first features is Wi-Fi 6. And Wi-Fi 6 on this is actually pretty nice. It has much better range than the previous gateways. The previous gateway I'm coming from is a BGW210-700, I believe. Don't quote me on that. And that Wi-Fi absolutely sucks bad. Like getting reception beyond a couple of walls is basically impossible and pointless. But this one seems to be a lot better and it was able to reach across the house, which was really nice to see. But you should know that I'm not using Wi-Fi 6 and I've disabled the Wi-Fi on this anyway, so I'm not even using it because I have ubiquity access points around the house. Now, another cool thing about this is this unit actually doesn't require having the ONT uh, in your home. So typically, or maybe not typically, but in my previous experience, at t actually had to install a fiber jack in the house. So basically the fiber line comes from the street, goes into the ONT, and then gets converted over to copper and then gets sent to the gateway. Well, now that has been totally eliminated. So it's freed up one port on my UPS, thank God, and there's no more conversions necessary. It all happens here. So now it goes from the street fiber straight to this F SFP port here on bottom, which is really cool to see. And then, you know, gets converted internally to copper or whatever uh, to go to your router, access point, gateway, whatever it may be on the other end. And on that subject, we'll go ahead and talk about the ports here on the rear. So what's really odd with this, and I think it is kind of a suggestion of at and future stance, is that you'll see that there's a blue port here that's a five gigabit port. Now, all of the other yellow ports are one gigabit and the USB is not usable for network storage or any, any kind of storage that you wanna to attach to your network and actually use. So it's very odd to see that five gigabit per second port on here, but I think that means that at t is thinking about rolling out two gigabit per second internet in the future, which would be really cool to see. Not that I need that or, well, maybe I do, I don't know, but we'll see. But nonetheless, I think that's pretty cool because that means that you know, if you if they do roll out 2000 megabytes per second in the future, you know, this thing would be already capable to do that. And most gaming computers are now finally starting to switch over to 2.5 gigabytes per second, which means that you'll actually be able to utilize that 2000 megabytes per second if at t decides to use that in the future. Now for the part that I know you guys are actually all here for and most interested in, can you do bridged mode with this? Well, Maybe. I tried it out and was totally unsuccessful, and I think my problem might be to do with not having modules that are compatible with this unit and or with my Ubiquity equipment. So the module that ship that comes with this definitely does not work with Ubiquity and vice versa. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna have to do in the future. I don't even know if I screwed up the software side of things by installing a container on the UDM Pro. Maybe that's the issue, but I'm pretty confident the real issue is the module incompatibility and or also since I don't have an ONT anymore, that could also be the other problem because most of the guides I've seen out there about bridge mode and just bypassing this all together actually all describe using the ONT in their steps and that's not something I have anymore. So unfortunately, I won't be able to answer you guys today I may try and take a look at it again. I've had this thing for a couple of weeks and I've been trying off and on during those couple of weeks and it's been totally unsuccessful. And I think the only way to really get it to work is to buy some more modules, which I really don't want to do at this time. Um, so maybe we'll have a video coming in the future about it, but I can't make any promises, unfortunately. However, on the subject of bypassing, IP pass through is still a thing and it is identical to all the previous generations of gateways that have existed. The software has not changed at all from the BW, BGW210-700 to this BGW320. Don't know why, but that's just the way it is. And speaking of software, oh boy, is this thing very strange. So let's say you wanna do some port forwarding, right? You go in there, you put in your ports, you say add these, services or port exceptions and they're like okay cool now i'll just you know map this port to this ip address and no you can't do that so unless the 
gateway actually can see the IP address and or Mac, it is not going to report that to that firewall service because it lists it in a drop down menu. You have to manually select which IP address you want to pass through. There is no way to manually input an IP address, which really sucks because it'd be really nice if you could just pass or port forward to a specific IP address. You can't do that and that's really dumb. When it does recognize an IP address, it will show you that IP address in the drop down menu, but there are some times where it definitely doesn't do that. Maybe it just takes a minute to update. I'm not really sure, but there are definitely some instances where it doesn't immediately recognize IP addresses and even not even just instantaneously, but even after several minutes, it feels like. What's really odd about this software too is they give you tons and tons and tons of options uh, in there to enable and disable things, but you can't turn off NAT at all. Uh, you're stuck with port forwarding and, and there's like tons of networking options I think a lot of you would be interested in. I can't go into detail about that because I lack the knowledge uh, for those kinds of things, but it's really odd how much you can enable and disable and then at the same time there's just things like you're not being able to manually enter an IP address which is really weird. So it's kind of a big bummer that with the newer hardware they don't have any new options uh, within the software to enable you to do things. Another important thing about this uh, that's actually a downside of this unit is that it's a thick boy. So it's not going to fit in a 1U uh, slot on your network rack. So that is not something I was aware of. It's just slightly bigger than 2U, only barely. So and hopefully you have room in your server rack at home or wherever you're planning to it. I do not have uh, anywhere to mount this thing. So it's just gonna sit on top of my network rack on the wall. It's pretty chonky. So just keep that in mind if you decide to upgrade from your previous gateway to this for any reason, uh, it is bigger than 2U, but only barely. Now the BGW210 is somewhere around 1U. It totally fit just fine in my server rack. Uh, so I'm already missing that thing a lot because speed wise, there's no difference between this and the BGW210. I'm seeing about the same exact speed test results from fast.com, speedtest.net, and Ubiquiti's own speed test, uh, or built-in speed test for their equipment. So I'm not seeing any difference there. They're all 900 plus megabits per second. I've very rarely seen the full one gigabyte per second, uh, but it has happened on occasion on speed test. Real world, identical results to the previous BGW210. Uh, you know, with Steam, I'm seeing upwards of 800 megabits per second and downloading from other services. Most of the time it's really quick and I don't even get to see the speed anyway. So there's really no hindrance from the hardware, I don't think. Yeah, I'm paying for gigabit and I'm not routinely seeing that, but honestly, it's mostly dependent on, you know, how close you are to the servers and, you know, maybe the hub is too far away and just all these different things. But other, other than the speed, I'm not seeing any problems uh, with this particular uh, version of their gateway. Lastly, if you're thinking about upgrading your gateway for any reason, it was actually pretty easy to attain. So all I did was call AT&T and talk to about four different people before finally one of them understood that I was asking to change out my gateway. And she quickly got an AT&T tech uh, appointment scheduled with me so that he could come out and actually install the gateway. And it was pretty seamless from there. I'll actually leave a recording of my conversation with the AT&T representatives. So that way you can see how I went about it and, you know, asked for it, I guess, if you're interested. But it was pretty simple. And, you know, you could just straight up just ask them for the gateway and they should deliver it to you at no cost, by the way. That's very important. And with all that being said, I think that really wraps it up. I'm not sure what else. Um, there is to say, if you guys do have questions, you know, just drop those in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, there's not too, too much information online. at t actually does have a frequently asked questions um, page, web page about this thing. And I think that will probably answer most of your questions about using this particular unit for most things uh, for the home network. And so with that, I just want to thank you guys all for watching and I will see you next time. Peace. Got it. So thank you so much for the information. I understand that uh, you wanted to have this new gateway from uh, at and and I know that uh, this is really important for you. The words are, we'll do something about it. So just uh, stay on the line, okay? Okay.
Um, this is Stefano Partita. Hi, how can I help you today? Um, I was calling because um, at t apparently has a new gateway available, the BGW320. And uh, it has Wi-Fi 6, and I was hoping that I could get my older gateway exchanged for that new one uh, so I could take advantage of Wi-Fi 6. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is uh, basically just you want to, like, uh, set up a BGW320. I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. Can you repeat? Yeah, you just want to set up a BGW320 because you currently don't have it. Uh, right, I don't have one. Okay. Uh, so I just need to pull up your account here. Um, can you please provide me with a telephone number that's associated to your account? At the moment, I will have to check in the system to see if we can... Uh, if we can like send it to you or if we will have to, you know, create a dispatch here uh, for a technician to come and install it. So bear with me here just for some time so I can check on everything. Okay? Yeah, take your time. Perfect. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you so much uh, for holding here. I was checking. It's not possible to be done as a self-installation. We will have to send out the premise technician. Okay. And we will have notes for the technician that it's for BCW320. So first, uh, just we need to disclose the verbiage here. So I can dispatch a technician to resolve this issue. There is no charge for the technician visit if the trouble is found in the AT&T network or equipment, if the problem is found inside your premises and the technician fixes your issue, you'll be charged a $99 flat rate for the repair, but however, any charges will be discussed by the technician. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and see uh, what available appointments we have here. So just a second. Okay. Okay. So the first available appointment that we have in the system would be for Wednesday, 2nd of December. We have two time frames from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. or 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, okay. So December 2nd. Um, we'll repeat the times. I'm sorry, I, I wasn't listening. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. or 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. is fine. Okay. I'm going to reserve it here and I'm going to create a ticket for you, so bear with me. Okay. And would a telephone number... ...be a good telephone number for a technician to contact you? Yes, that's perfect. Okay, so I have scheduled the appointment for December 2nd, which is on Wednesday. Technician will be there between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. Just someone 18 years of age or older must be there for the duration of the service call. The equipment must be accessible. And also you should receive a text message containing the appointment details, and you can check them as well using my at and app. So, um, yeah, basically here the resolution, we just send the technician here. I put the notes uh, that it's for a new BGW320 modem. So do you maybe have any additional questions for me? No, ma'am. That's everything. Perfect. So from my side, I would like to thank you so much for choosing AT&T, and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.